Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Needs Podcast, episode 72. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this podcast from Northern Tasmania in Australia. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram and I have a Etsy shop, Rose Hip Island, where you can find my hand dyed yarn. Thank you everyone for joining me. You might notice a bit of a difference with the video today. I'm trying to use the front camera instead of the back camera or the other way around. I'm using the better quality camera. I don't know if that will translate um, over to YouTube when I upload it. I don't know. I do also have a new microphone and I've tried to connect that but I haven't, um, I have some interference issues with that when I'm connected up to my MacBook to be able to see that I'm on the screen. I have to figure it out. I did try three times <laughs> and in the end I just figured if I'm going to get a whole episode recorded today I just have to do it one step at a time. So today we're going to try to improve the video quality. Hopefully next time we'll improve the audio. So just bear with me. I'm trying. <laughs> I figured with three years uh, of podcasting it was time to invest some time and money in in the quality of the podcast. So I hope that you appreciate that and I really hope that it will work out and there will actually be a difference. We're having a lovely sunny autumn day here today and um, I'm just taking some time. I took a bit longer time than I had anticipated because of my issues with the setup, but yes, I'm just going to relax now and just, it will be what it is. And just, I'd like to share with you what I have been working on. This is mainly a knitting podcast and a bit of a hand dyeing podcast and anything wool and fiber related, but basically knitting mostly. So I have been doing some knitting since last time and I'd like to share that with you. Quickly, I'll just say that we did have a giveaway for a um, shawl design, a pattern, in our Ravelry group on Ravelry. And you find that just by going and look for Rose Hip Knits Podcast in the Groups tab. We did have a giveaway thread in there and I randomly drew a winner of that and um, I have notified that person and I have notified Wendy Cudd who is the designer of the shawl, the Cockatoo Mist shawl. So that's all happened. So thank you to everyone who participated in that. I love reading the thread about your uh, op shop uh, adventures. So that was great. Thank you. I just really like to move on and talk about what I have been working on since I last saw you. I had started a quin hat for my daughter last time, I believe. I have now finished that hat. This is Quinn by Woolly Wormhead. The third time I make this hat, this is the one I made previously. The previous one was some, some Noro, I can't remember which Noro, the sort of air and weight, and a onion wool and nettle yarn. And this has been really good. So I wanted to make one in a navy that my daughter could wear with her school uniform. And my mum gave me for Christmas some pickles yarn and I had a a skein of let's see if I can find it. I had a skein of pickles angora and a skein of pickles extra fine merino and this is what I have left. So I held them double and I think I used a three millimeter needle. Not that that really matters. I'm a loose knitter, so it's probably different to anyone else what they would use to get the same gauge. I did a larger size. I didn't do gauge swatch. I just thought I'll go for it and see. I think the largest size is an adult size, so it is quite big. Uh, it does actually go on my head, but it, my daughter can wear it and she can fit her hair in it when it's up and everything, and that's handy. The Angora get, gives it a nice fluffy look and it makes it really nice and soft as well. So that was a um, great make. It was nice to get that done for her. I really love this pattern. I think it's 
just a great um, pattern to get a sort of an ear flap hat but without having to make separate ear flaps it's just all in the one um, go <laughs> so that's quick another thing that I have worked on a lot since last time um, well that's that's not correct I worked on it after I recorded um, but I haven't touched it for a couple of weeks now and that is my Crazy Heart jumper. Crazy Heart is a colorwork jumper by Tannis Lavelli. I used a Bendigo Stella for this. It's a Bendigo Stella um, metallics for the body in a cast iron colorway. It's sort of a navy colorway. And then there's one, two, three, four different colors um, for the colorwork. Um, as I suspected, the sort of gradient doesn't quite show in the last lighter colours, but it does show in real life much better than it does on the screen. So I got up to the neck, I was doing the neck band and I thought, Stash Dash is only a couple of weeks away, I'll just put this down and I'll complete it when Stash Dash has started. And Stash Dash starts tomorrow in the US and I think Saturday probably in Australia if it's real time you go with. So I'm going to pick this up again on the weekend and finish it. I just have to do the neck band and graft under the underarms. I have tried it on. I really like it. Really, really like it. And I think once it's blocked, it's going to be just beautiful. I made the body a little bit shorter than the pattern, I believe. And I did the sleeves a little bit longer. That's how I like my jumpers. So I'm really looking forward to wearing this and I'm looking forward to showing it to you once it's sort of 100% complete. It'll be great. I have not in Ravelry yet put all the colorways in for the colors that I used, but I will do that now that sort of it's, it's finished. Uh, everything I work on, I put on Ravelry and you can find details there if you're interested. Just go and look for Rosehip Chick on there. So that's Crazy Heart by Tannis Lavelli. And then last time, I did tell you that I was going to start a shawl, the Merrick shawl by Whiskey Bay Woolens. The Merrick shawl is part of a knit along, the new wool knit along that is hosted by Wool Gatherings, Karen. There's a few different patterns that are part of this knit along and I chose the Merrick shawl. And, um, I have started it and I have almost, almost used three skeins already. It's a, you use three different skeins. I don't know how much you use of the third skein, but I have basically used two full skeins almost. Um, I'll show you and then I'll tell you about the yarn. I did put it on two needles to be able to show it to you a bit better. Here it is. It's probably still going to be hard to show you. Uh, but there it is and I had to modify it a bit um, because my first skein was only a partial skein and I ran out before I was able to do the alternating of the colors to sort of fade them into the second color so I just stopped when I ran out of yarn I don't know how much I had left I did not have much left at all Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and then I just continued on with the second colour. The second colour, I'm now four rows away from um, finishing with that one and then doing the, the border with the third colour. These colours that I'm using and the yarn that I'm using, it's um, from an experiment that I did. I have been um, using well, I have, I've had a few samples of some new yarn bases that I wanted to try and maybe add to my shop. The Vic Victoria Sock Yarn that I've had, and it's been really popular and I love it, and that's this first colour here. I won't be able to get hold of it anymore, so I only have what I have in stock, and I do have quite a bit of it undyed, but I wanted to find something I could replace it with. So what I did was that I had some different samples uh, with potential sock yarns to dye 
and I dyed them all in the same pot, uh, the sea spray colorway. Because I wanted to see how they reacted to the dye differently and I wanted to see what they were like in relation to Victoria Sock Yarn, which I'm very experienced and confident with dyeing because every base, every dye reacts differently and just having done a few hours or having the experience of dyeing just makes it so much easier. Starting with something new, you need to put a bit of time into learning about that new base or new dye. So anyway, I had three skeins that I put in a pot and so I did the Victoria and then this second colour here was in the same dye bath. This is a a sock yarn that I tried out. It's an 85% Australian Merino and 15% nylon. So it's a little bit different to the Victoria, which is 80-20. Um, obviously, the Victoria sock yarn just absorbed the dye in like no time and just left some dye for the other skeins. Um, so the Victoria sock yarn, it's, it's much more saturated and it took up a, lo a lot of the sort of turquoisey part of it, the stronger colour, and then this one here just came out a lot more muted, but I thought they'd work together quite well. It's not at all like what's in the pattern, the, the colourways used there, they're sort of more of a solid and then a, a variegated or speckled, but I, I wanted to use these together because I also wanted to see how they knitted up and how the new base was different to my Victoria base. Anyway, it's all an experiment, the dyeing, the knitting, and just to see how it all works together and to see how they're different. So I have that experience and I, I know. Um, I must say that this 8515 is, um, I don't know if it's a bit thinner or if it's just not as um, plump, but it's a lot, not a lot softer, but it is softer than the Victoria. And I've always thought the Victoria was very soft, but this is, is really nice and soft they do work really well together and I'm happy with this one and I, I think this is the one that I'll be using for my advent calendars this year um, I really like it I'm just sort of waiting for some costings for it so I'm 99% I'm sure that this will be the base that I use for the, the advent calendars and I, I'll talk about them at the end because um, I have some decisions and information um, about that. So yes, I've, I've got that much. Four more rows and then I start the border. So then with the border, what I thought I'd do mm -hmm. was to use another new yarn base. Uh, I did not dye up the same colorway in the new yarn base, but this is one that I had, I, I really liked it and I've decided to put it in the shop. And it's, I've, I've called it the Delicious Sock Yarn, and it's also an 85% Australian Merino, 15% nylon base. And I did uh, just a test, and I did a red one, because in my mind, a strong sort of petrol colour and a pinky red would just, like, that would just pop and be really nice. So I do think that those two go really well together. But then when the second one came out a bit muted, I'm not so sure anymore. Because I wanted to have the three different bases in the same shawl to be able to see how they work together. Um, so I had that. I've also dyed up some more of this delicious sock for the shop. So now I'm thinking if I should take some of <laughs> one of those to add to my shawl and I have I have them here I have this one called the feather boa I think that could be nice uh, or fine autumn day I don't know that would be quite different I do like the brown this is um, hot potato I believe I called it I think that could be nice but uh, it's so, a totally different thing than compared to using red, which would just sort of pop and make it colorful. This is, yeah, it's very nice, but it doesn't have that fun brightness to it. And then I have a, a gray one, sort of an elephant gray, Miss Ella. I thought that's nice too, but it's similar to the brown in how they sort of 
more muted colorways. I have dungarees. Don't think that would go. I have golden straw. That would pop. That would be a nice crazy shawl. <laughs> um, and then I have another in the 50s I've called this one. And that's sort of in the greens and turquoise again. So that will sort of keep that green theme. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I'll go with the feather boa. I don't know. But I think I'll try to see how the red one works first. Because I think that will be fun. Not too Christmassy, I hope. Hmm. So that's what I'm working on. And I think the knit along finishes 14th of June maybe. But I'm hoping to get that done soon. Because I want to have those three bases knit up together. And be able to see how that works. Um, I did put a third skein. Now, do where do I have this? I think it's a little bit of a mess because I've I've done this recording three times. <laughs> I did put a third skein into that same dye bath of the sea spray, and that's uh, this one here. And this is another sample I had of a merino bamboo and silk base. And I can't ex remember the exact percentage of each of them. Uh, this one looked strange when it was on, in the undyed state. And I wasn't too sure about it. But I thought I'll, I'll pop it in the pot with the other one. See how it is. And I really loved it when it came out. It's, um, it sort of feels like a cotton but softer. If that makes sense. It doesn't have the hardness like the cotton. Um, but it's very slick not floofy so i wanted to cast something on using that and i cast on to infinity and beyond by um hockey locatelli and that's this one and you can't see much <laughs> it's just a mess uh, this is a free pattern on ravelry which i thought was uh, handy to have a sample that it you know it's a free pattern and it has some lace and some cabling in it. Uh, I've put this on a 150 centimeter circular, which is long enough for me to not magic loop it. But I got a bit sick of moving, moving the knitting around, so I've started magic looping it anyway. I think I'll change these needles. The the bamboo needles do work well with this yarn, but because it's such a a large, uh, um, such a large item and so many stitches around, it is still a bit of a drag. So once I've got some other three millimeter needles available, I'll change and use those instead. So there's a lot of my sea spray and the green colorway <clears throat> happening at the moment, but I'm I'm not sick of it. I like it. So. So they are the things I think I've worked on. Yes, I checked my notes. They are the things that I have worked on. And I do have a few things that I am holding back a bit until Stash Dash starts and I'll share them with you. I've put on Instagram that I do have a lot of socks that I'm working on at the moment. These ones are not that um, old. These are my Armin Carlos socks. I have one with the heel on and one with just the waist yarn where I'm going to put in the afterthought heel. I did this heel just like I do my toes. I'm close to putting the toe on this sock and I'm just, I am just have to go a little bit further on, on this one. I have been using the Addy Crazy Trio needles which are the bendy needles uh, use three in episode 70 I think it was I did talk a bit about them 
Uh, so check that out if you're interested in a review of those. Um, but yes, these will be quick once I, I work on them. This is Regia Arnen Carlos and my contrasting colour is a Fable sock yarn. So I have those to finish, stash dash. And I have more socks. I have these, which are just vanilla socks that I made out of my Festive Feast colorway on the Victoria sock. And I've put in contrasting sort of mustard yellow toes and I have two small skeins that I'm going to put in um, for the heels and they're going to be true after thought heels because I have to cut up where I want them. I have no waste yarn there. So they're another thing that I will finish for Stash Dash. Another pair of socks I will finish are these. These are the First Day Socks by Verena Course. I used a skein the top draw yarn, uh, I think in the Rocky Road colorway. And I just used my Victoria sock in a hot pink colorway for the contrasting toes and heels. I do have another mini skein of that, so I can do my cuffs in, in that. Or I might just use um, the, the main colour. So I have those, they're not far from being finished. What other socks do I have? Oh, in this little travel knitting bag, I have some socks. Well, one sock that I cast on not long ago when I was in Hobart, so you've seen that recently. I have just plain vanilla socks that I'm doing on some nine inch circulars. And I have now taken off the yarn um, so that the skein, the main skein now starts at the point um, where this one starts in the colour repeats. So hopefully the socks will be similar in the stripe sequence. And I, I normally don't worry about that, but because the stripe sequence is so long, they would just look really off if they were not similar, I think. And I do like to have the navy for the heel, so I was going to try to do that again. So I took off the yarn so that I can just continue. I'm at the point where I want to start their toe, toe decreases. So I'll do that on that. And then I have the needle and the rest of the ball ready for my second sock. So that's something else I can finish for stash dash. And then I have a pair of crochet socks, the baseline socks by Adaday Designs, Deanne Ramsey. And I have one sock that I've had completed for a long time now, and I love it. I, in this, I used um, some Victoria sock, the blue one, that was a leftover from the Blurred Lines sweater I made for my mum. And the speckly colorway is a Circus Tonic Handmade in her reverie sock. So I just need to do the second sock for that. And once um, I've started them, they're actually really quick to make. So that's a sock. I do have some of what I call my pirate socks. They've been on the needles for a long time. This is just something that I do when I have done some self striping. And I haven't done self striping for a long time. It's a lot of work involved in doing self striping. And if if I don't sell them, I just, yeah, it's just not worth for me to have them sitting in the shop. But I do love to, to knit with self striping. So every now and then I still do it because I like to use self striping myself. But uh, it is a lot of work and really you can never get paid enough for the time it takes to do it and you can't sell yarn for like a hundred dollars a skein so you get paid a decent hourly rate um, but it is fun to do some sometimes I'm just haven't figured out a way to do it where it's um, really really quick and not messy and not a tangle <laughs> you can never get it sort of working completely smoothly or I can't probably because I don't do it often enough but I have been doing some self striping and I do like it uh, it's fun to sort of design the colour sequence and everything. So 
these are some cell striping that I've had. This is a, the pizza night, I think I called it. I still have two of those. Um, and this one was surf, surfer or something, I think. So what I've done when I've had cell striping is that I've taken um, just a small sample for myself so I can eat them up and show what they look like. So I've started a sock with this one and I've put the after the waist yarn in for an afterthought heel. But I just have that much of it. And then I have another one I started, which is some other colorways. So these are just like sample socks that of my hand dye that didn't get further than, than this. I didn't want to continue doing this um, cell striping, the pirate socks, because I want to use more of my own cell striping yarn, so I have to wait until I have more of that. So maybe that's something I'm motivated to do for Stash Stash to be able to finish socks. I'll show you a pair of pirate socks that I have finished out of my hand dyed yarn. I don't have sock blockers here, but these I've used just small, parts or cell striping yarn or ones that I've dyed myself and that have been in my shop in the past. I really love them but I don't want to wear them because I want to be able to show them. <laughs> That's sort of a sample of my cell striping. So yes, there's a lot of socks that I can finish stash dash to get some yardage for that. Stash Dash is only really a competition with yourself to see how much you can finish and it's just a great motivator for getting things off the needles. Another couple of things I can do for Stash Dash to get more yardage um, are to fix a couple of mittens that I have. I made these um, two years ago I think and the thumbs are just not long enough. So one thing I can do is to rip out the thumbs, they were way too short, and um, I can rip them out and put new thumbs in and then I'll get the yardage for the whole pair. And I have another pair of mittens that I did like seven years ago. Um, and they're the same, the, the thumbs are just, they're, they're long enough but they're not wide enough. I, could, I haven't tried blocking them, I could probably do that, but I thought, I'll um, get, take these thumbs out as well and put new thumbs in and I can count the yardage for the whole mitten so I have those. So yes, that's my horse dash dash parade. So ready, set, dash dash, I say. Um, so that's what I have been working on, what I will be working on hopefully for stash dash and um, Yes, I hope this recording has worked out using high quality video and the other camera. Hopefully next time I can get the microphone to work. <laughs> um, yes, then I did show you that I have been doing that dyeing. I, I showed you all the different uh, skeins of my new base, the Delicious Sock. So I have um, a few different colorways of that and what I did was that out of the um, sort of more neutral tonal yarns and semi-solids I did quite a few skeins so there's enough to make a, a sweater out of it or for a main color of a color work sweater. So I was trying to pair different colors. So I was looking at doing a spike um, jumper, which is like every second person, every second knitter has made one, uh, but I was a bit tempted and I started dyeing up th with that in mind and thinking of like this as the main colour and this as the lace part, I think they will be nice, and the same with these using the grey as the main and this um, in the 50s turquoise green as the lace yoke. So what I did was I went shopping in my own shop to do the spike and I realised that there wasn't a lot there that were just tonals or semi-solids that I can use as the main colour. 
Uh, because normally when I die, I think of dying those extra skeins that you can pair with just like a com commercially dyed yarn that you have in your stash, <clears throat> excuse me, or just um, a special skein of yarn that you can use for a shawl or two or three of them that you can use for a shawl together. So I haven't really thought in the way of sweater quantities much before, but when I went shopping in my own shop and I couldn't really find what I was looking for, it made me uh, think a bit and I did create a few sweater quantities. Um, so the other new yarn base that I have um, is a fingering weight new merino yarn. So it's a non-superwash Australian traceable merino yarn. And I've dyed it up in um, a few different colours and again I did a grey and a brown that I did quite a few of each. I think they're great main colours. I have a couple of a beautiful purple. I have some of the sea spray colourway. Have some water colours. Came out really pale. This so this is a non superwash, so it does take dye differently. It's really nice and soft. I had a bit of a different um, pink and purple, and I have. The raindrops colorway and this is a new one that doesn't have a name yet so I haven't listed any of these new merino ones but I have them already so that's something I need to do and now um, I went to get this skein so I can also show you the the ones that I did on the dandy sock as I said I did some just more sort of neutral colorways so a navy light brown a darker brown and a pink. So I did enough of these so there's enough for like a sweater quantity of those. And yes, I'm tempted by a few different options like these two together. I think this one I call future, maybe. Like both for a spike would be nice. Or these two would be lovely for a spike. So I've had lots of fun um just playing around with colourways, new yarn bases. Um yeah, so there's a lot up in the shop. So I did talk briefly about the advent calendar before. I have thought about my advent calendar. I wanted to do it the whole time. I will do a version of an advent calendar. This year, I'm doing it a little bit differently, both because variation is nice. Doing things a bit differently is nice for me. It's nice for people um, who are looking for a special treat for Christmas. So last year I did 24 10 gram minis, which created some amazing projects. This year I thought I'd do it differently so that you can get a different type of project as an end result if you want to use all your skeins for one project. So I have decided to make um, more like a 12 days of Christmas version. But you can, you can make it into an advent calendar. And I, I'll try to not make it sound confusing. But basically, I like to do, twi I like to do 20 gram mini skeins because it's just easier. And as a variation from last year, it means that you can create some different projects to last year. So I'll do 12 days of Christmas with 20 gram mini skeins. But I'll have two different sets. So I'll have a cool set with cool colours, greens and blues and cool purples, things like that. There will be just not all solids or semi-solids or tonals. There'll be some speckles and variegation and just different. They'll all go together. And then I'll have one set of warm coloured ways. So if um, you choose to only do 12, days of Christmas, which will give you 240 grams of yarn, which will make a substantial project, which will be the same amount of yarn as the advent calendar I did yet last year, but it will be more of each colorway and only 12 colorways. But then you can choose to do the warm and the cold and you get 24 
mini skeins and you can open one every day in December until Christmas and you can I'll label label both of them 1 to 12 but I'll have them different colors so you can choose to do a project where you use warm cold warm cold or you can do all warm and then all cold you can you can mix it you can it will give you a lot of options of what to do with them and it will give you the option of doing fewer colorways more colorways how to use them in your project um, and I just thought thought it would be nice to do something a little bit different to last year so that's my plan and um, I I can show you I have had some samples of some other uh, yarn bases to use for the advent calendar but mostly it will be that 85% um, merino Australian non mules merino 15% nylon it will most of them I'll have, have I that I will have available will be on that yarn base but then I'll have some limited quantities of a single ply and I just did a, a light red sort of to try to dye it um, so there will be few sets of just a single ply Australian Merino and I'll have limited uh, amount of a sparkly Australian Merino and it has a silver uh, thread through it. Um, yes, which could be fun I thought, but I only have a few each of those and then the rest will be a silk yarn. So I, because I will be away for about six weeks, June, mid through June until end of July, I will be away and I will take everything out of the shop on Etsy. But I will potentially put the pre orders up for these 12 days of Christmas. And mostly because I know that other people have put their advent calendars out. And first I thought, oh, it's way too early for me, I, I can't do this early. But then I thought, if you are looking for an advent calendar or some special treat for Christmas, then maybe you'd still like to, you would like to know what the different dyes are, um, are doing and what um, they're offering. So I thought I'll put my pre-orders out there just so that people can compare different dyes and see which um, advent calendar or 12 days of Christmas will suit what um, they would like to do or their budget or anything like that so I will do that um, I'm hoping to do it um, early June and hopefully I can keep them open while I'm away even though I'll take everything I'll make every everything else inactive in Etsy so yes also heads up if you're after something um, if, the, if you're after anything in the shop, go and get it before the 10th of June, I'd say. I think I'll, um, I'll have to um, put my shop in holiday mode or make everything inactive that's current and only have the pre-orders for the 12 days of Christmas up. So, um, that's happening. Sorry, that was a lot of shop talk. Okay. Um, I will continue on with my day. I need to make some cupcakes because it's my daughter's eighth birthday tomorrow and she's bringing cupcakes to school. So I have to do that. And um, I hope this has recorded smoothly. I have no idea. And as I said, hopefully, hopefully next time I record, I will have a microphone connected that is working and giving um, a good, good audio for you that's all for this time take care everyone i'll see you next time bye